Hi everybody, how's it going? So I made a video in 2017 about how I set up my laptop as a front-end web developer and I thought it was time for an update to look at the tools I'm using now. So the first thing I use is VS Code or Visual Studio Code. This is my go-to IDE now. So it's made by Microsoft. It's actually a program written in JavaScript and then packaged up in Electron and sent out to users that way. It's got an amazing ecosystem of extensions so you can really customize it and make it your own. So it really does everything you need it to do. It can work in all different types of languages and most importantly, it's free. So it's, you know, what most people are using nowadays, I think. The next thing I use is Google Chrome, um, not only because it's kind of the most popular browser in the world, but because it has a really powerful debugger, a really good console. And I don't wanna be sort of very, um, make a statement about it, but most of the time if you're developing for the web, you're developing for Chrome users. And they've also got a really great way that you can simulate mobile usage or you can simulate responsiveness. So you can really test and build as you go cross-platform. So the next one I use is called iTerm2, and it's basically a wrapper for the Mac terminal, so allowing you to do command line stuff. So if you're working with frameworks like Angular, React, or Node, or anything like that, that you have to use a lot of the command line, iTerm2 kind of just makes your terminal feel a lot more comfortable and easy to use and more intuitive. Then if I'm doing either a front-end application or if I'm building a back-end and I haven't built the front-end first, I use a tool called Postman. Uh, Postman basically simulates a front-end and it just allows you to do um, requests to APIs or servers you might be building all from an app that you don't have to worry about how the data is being shown. You just build your request together send it off and look at the response you get back. It's really quick and it's really easy to use and it's great for prototyping and building backends really quickly. Now, the main database that I use professionally at work and also sort of on my own projects is still MongoDB. Um, so I run that locally on my machine. So when I've got local instances running, I like to use Robo3T to sort of visualize those and provide a graphical user interface to it just to make it a bit easier to understand um, when I'm first building out an app or building out a server, how my data looks. The next thing I actually use is the Notes app on my iPhone for just jotting down ideas. I now found that at this point, I could just sort of just write down an idea and then when I get home, I actually like to just use a pen and paper and jot down my ideas that way instead. But just having a Note app on hand just helps me keep those ideas I might have in a fleeting instance and just writing them down somewhere. Another really important tool that I use nowadays is actually YouTube. Um, the amazing web development community that's sprung up in the last few years, the amount of people out there that are doing tutorials, talks, uh, channels that are sharing talks from uh, conferences all over the world. Anything you wanna learn, anything you wanna know, anything you're trying to do, there's somebody who's already done it and made a video like this one and put it on YouTube and it's showing you how to do it. So YouTube is a really important tool that I use, along with obviously Google and Stack Overflow and all the, the normal stuff that you would use in a development sphere. YouTube, I find, is a really, really important and useful tool in my sort of day-to-day -day life, professionally and personally. So there we go. There's a lot quicker list than last time. Those are the tools that I'm using professionally and personally as a web developer in 2019. Um, if you're using anything different or if you have any other opinions, then please let me know in the comments down below. Um, and until next time, there should be a sort of like a little face up here um, that you can go here and subscribe or a little video up here that you can go and watch that YouTube's worked out that's something you'd be interested in. And again, until next time, thanks a lot for watching and uh, see you again soon.